for two retirees hooked on travel. Follow us on our journeys around the world. The cruise port says Edinburgh, but you'll be anchored offshore at the South Queen's Ferry, which is a small seaside town. There you'll be transferred by tender boats to shore. Next to the Fort Railroad Bridge, you'll see double-decker buses on the left side of the pier. Of course, there's other options you can take, like the train, the taxi, but we found the bus being the most convenient. After you get off the, sh the shuttle boat, then you just get on a public bus. It was 10 pounds per person round trip, and it's good for any public bus system in the city. So we're already off. We took like 10 minutes. You just go up to a guy and you give him your credit card, and then you just pay right there. And they're standing right at the bus to take your credit card, and you jump on really fast. It's just a 25 minute trip to the capital of Scotland, Edinburgh, and they drop you right downtown. On the way to Edinburgh, you see picturesque countryside and barley fields. It's a very unique architecture with extensive use of stone for their construction. It gives it a fairy tale look, and I imagine it's extremely beautiful in the winter. There's the castle. We uh, just got off the bus, and it, by the time that, from the time that we got on the tender to the time that we got off the bus was 55 minutes, just so you can plan your time coming in to the city. It has a real medieval feel to it. We're heading to the famous Royal Mile. It's called the Royal Mile because it's between the Royal Palace and the Edinburgh Castle. And I guess it must be a mile long. Let's go see it. Once you come up around the hill, you enter the, the Royal Mile. And this is where all the really neat shops and kind of the famous uh, buildings are. And we turn right to head up the hill towards the castle. Wow, look at that scotch. Look how much there is in there. It's loaded. Wow, look at these. You can put your scotch in there and so when you have a party, <laughs> that's impressive. The closer we get to the palace, the more crowded it gets. Looks like everyone's here. There's plenty of gift shops, a lot of them selling different kinds of whiskeys and Scottish souvenirs. There's lots of street artists, outside cafes, 
different kinds of gift shops. Yeah. And everyone's heading, I think, to the castle. They're selling a lot of lamb's wool and cashmere. Scottish gin. I didn't know that they made gin. Hmm. Rum. I'm really not sure what's going on with this city, but I'm appalled at the garbage it's everywhere. We're not used to that. Uh, what we just found out is you have to, to go on their website, the, the castle, the Edinburgh Castle website, and purchase your tickets there, and then you come to this kiosk and you collect the ticket. If you didn't do it beforehand, you're not going to get a ticket, and we don't have internet here. Since we couldn't get online tickets to visit the castle, we decided to go to Calton Hill and then explore the palace. When you're here, make sure that you come to Calton Hill and you're gonna be rewarded with a stunning view of the city. It's less crowded, very peaceful. Um, the mile, the Royal Mile was a little bit too busy for our taste. So it's definitely worth, worth hiking up here and, and uh, experiencing this, it's really nice. Mm -hmm. The transfer ticket for the port to Edinburgh also covers all other public transport. You can also take bus 19 and 44 if you want to go directly to the palace, but we decided to walk to Calton Hill for some spectacular views and then we walked to the palace. We found a shortcut through the cemetery. Yeah, the entrance fee was uh, 36 pounds for two people. And we came here on the city bus. So a beast taking a tour and uh, you can do this all on your own. It's not a problem at all. I'm going in the front door of the palace. They have a nice audio guide too, by the way, in every language. This palace has now been home to royalty for over 500 years, and it's still the official residence of the Queen of Scotland. It's a working palace where they still have official engagements and ceremonies. We really enjoyed our visit here to see the history and to realize this is currently being used. The dining room is still being used for official dinners.
The grounds that are uh, surrounding the palace is enormous. This is the outside uh, where the entrance is to go inside the palace. The place is enormous. It's a working palace. The queen still has meetings here with dignitaries. They still uh, use the dining room. A lot of history, a lot of tapestry and paintings. Still old beds and the way the bedrooms were set up originally. It's, it's worth it. It's really quite interesting. After a great day exploring Edinburgh, we headed back to the ship in time for our next destination.